Morning guys, Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. What I wanted to do today was I wanted to talk to you real quick about modifying your current knife or your Mora knife. In particular, we're going to talk about Mora knives to be a better all-around tool for you in a survival or bushcraft scenario. And the problem with a lot of knife companies nowadays, and even Mora has been guilty of it in the past, is they do not put a hard 90 degree spine on the back of their blades. It's rounded over. And a lot of knife companies do that. And I think the main reason for that is because it's more comfortable when people put their thumb on the back of the knife if it's rounded and not squared. But you shouldn't be putting your thumb on the back of your knife anyway unless you're doing some very, very fine carving tasks. So what your knife should really do is it should have a sharp enough spine on it that when you strike your ferro rod, it throws a shower of sparks with not a whole lot of effort. If it does that so you don't have to use the blade and compromise the blade of your knife, then you've got a worthwhile tool. And if it's a high enough carbon steel that it will strike sparks from the blade with a piece of flint, then you've got a better survival tool. And most of the more carbon knives will all do that. The problem with many of the Mora carbon knives is they don't have that 90 degree spine. The Mora Bushcraft Black is, in my opinion, one of the better all around knives that Mora sells for a knife that's not full tang. And just because it's not full tang doesn't mean it's worthless. It just means you need a saw or an axe to be careful of how hard you're going to be batoning this knife and how big of wood you're going to process. But it has a good 90 degree spine on it, so it throws really good sparks off of a ferrocerium rod. That's great. The problem is this is one of the only knives that Mora makes other than the one that they make now with Light My Fire with the fire steel in the back of it that really has that good hard 90 degree spine. I have a Mora SL2 here that I've been carrying since probably 2007-ish and it's been modified like I'm going to show you today to throw better sparks but it still doesn't throw the sparks like it should. You can see that it will do the job. It will throw sparks. But I'm putting a pretty good amount of pressure on it to get it to do that. And the spine is just softer on this knife than it is on the bushcraft. So you've got to take those things into consideration when you select a knife. Now this is my backup fine carving knife. But I'd still like to have my backup knife do most of the things that my regular knife will do. So if I can make it throw sparks at least marginally, that's better than nothing. And if I get on the right spot on the back of the spine, it does a pretty good job. Not near as good as my butcher knife. So if you buy a Mora knife, and the most popular Mora that we saw on our website right now, because of price, is probably the Mora Companion. It comes in an OD green sheath. It's got an OD green and black handle. It's rubberized for good, comfortable grip. It's a very nice, high carbon steel knife, razor sharp. The problem is, it doesn't have that... 90 degree spine. So if I try to strike a ferrocerium rod with it, I get nothing. It's basically a round on a round at that point. I'm not getting any sharp edge here to remove material from this rod. So I've got to modify this knife to make it better useful to me. And we're going to do that with a grinder. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Okay, so I've got a bench grinder here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my knife and I've covered the blade in tape. And I'm going to grind the spine of my knife so that it's flat instead of round. I have a bowl of water right over here because I don't want to overheat this knife and ruin the temper in the blade. And that's what I have to be careful and cognizant of. So I'm going to start very lightly. I'm going to put my glasses on here so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to start very lightly with this thing and go about to where the point drops. Trying to keep it nice and flat. Now every once in a while I'm going to need to put this knife in water just to make sure that it doesn't get overheated. I want to keep it cool.
There we go. Now we're starting to get some edge built up on there. Where it's a good flat 90. And that's what we're after. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this thing and test it on our ferro rod and see where we're at. Okay, so now we've ground off this spine. We've kept it cool. We didn't change the temper because we haven't changed the color anywhere. And now we're getting this. A whole lot better situation now. And this has got a much harder spine than that 2.0 does. I can tell by how many sparks this thing's thrown. I don't have to put very much pressure on it and it's just showering the sparks. And that is exactly what I'm looking for. Now I have a good usable knife for bushcraft and survival. Not only is it going to be a good carving knife, it's going to stay really sharp. It's also going to be very good for use with my ferrocerium rod and or flint and steel for fire starting. Okay guys, so Quick two minute modification to a $20 knife and now we've really got something worth having. Now we got something that just show, throws a shower of sparks. We know it's going to stay sharp. We know it's going to be great for carving, great for feather sticks, great for any fine tasks that we need to take care of. And we know it's going to be good for fire starting as well in the event that we have to use it for that instead of our main knife or if it is our main knife. I'm Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. I thank you for joining me for this video. I thank you for everything you do for me, for my school, my family, friends, sponsors, and affiliates. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.